But why did you say anything? We don't talk about these things. There are things that are happening where I work, but I keep quiet. You're a snitch. You should have kept quiet. This is what the friends of Matapelo More, a former auditor who blew the whistle on her bosses, say to her. She raised the alarm about corruption at a company called Daybreak Farms, which is owned by the Public Investment Corporation. And had she been listened to, she says, 200 million rand of public money might have been saved. Instead, she now says her life is hell. They have broken me. We're joined on the line by uh, the Daybreak Farms whistleblower, Matape Lomore, and uh, for her, of course, and typical whistleblowers in this country, this is a story we need to know about. Matape, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. Good morning, Bongani. Thanks for letting me on your show. As I understand it, you reached out to the Sunday Times to tell your story because you felt that you had reached breaking point. Yes, Bongani. Um, If if, if you know about our company, we've been in the media for almost uh, two years since I left Daybreak. Let me say maybe 22 months. Yeah. The story has been in the media and I felt that nothing was done. it was as if nobody's listening to what we were saying. We were crying for help, but nobody was listening. That's when I reached out to Sunday Times and told them my story because I felt that South Africa should and un- should should understand and how whistleblowers are being treated. <sighs> Of course, your story has been in the media, as you say. You were head of internal audit. Um, you were the technical executive. Yours were very senior roles in this company. Yes, they were. A sen- they were senior roles, and obviously, being in a serious a senior role and looking at uh, the history of Daybreak, where the company was making losses, we were very care- uh, careful about expenditure after the turnaround of Daybreak when the company started turning around and making profits, we knew our history. We knew where we were coming from. So we were very careful about expenditure. So anything that smelled or or looked like where we come from, we were very careful about. So when we got um, invoices for PDFs of about 400,000, the board approving 400% increase for contracts, we decided to write to the PIC to say, we have a problem, we might have a problem. And a simple, you know, desktop uh, search of the board members that were brought by PIC indicated that we might have a problem, but we were careful not to accuse. So even in the nine page letter that we sent to the PIC, we said, we have concerns. Please let us know if you did a background checks on the new board members. If you did, we will try to find a way of working with them and, you know, making sure that uh, governance is still maintained in the business. But unfortunately, after sending the letter on 12 January 2021, we did not hear anything from the PIC. For, That's why we for, decided. Yeah. Hold on, let me come in there. For people who may not be familiar with no. the story, you've already mentioned uh, mm. the increase of contracts by up to 400%. But just give us briefly, if you can, some of the things you were concerned about, the corruption that you thought might be going on. Okay. Initially, we had, uh, when the board joined, they joined uh, February, in February 2020. But that was just a month before the country went into lockdown. But we, the CEO was inundated with a request from the PIC to conduct a, an induction for the board. And we were called in back to the office because already we were on lockdown. May 2020, we had an induction for the board. And that's where the problem started. They insisted that we put together an integrated report, even without the company collecting data for the whole year, but they insisted, I advised that with an integrated report, you need to collect data before we can put such a report out. But they insisted on an integrated report, only to take that report, convert it to PDF, and invoice the company 400,000 for it. 
when we were approaching Christmas, the board chairperson, Mr. Lratonache, sent an email to the CEO's office with a picture of himself and a Christmas message and asked the CEO to send it to the entire company. For that message, the company was invoiced 84,000. What? Subsequent to that, yes, 84,000 for a Christmas message. Subsequent to that, we, the company secretariat company, it was, a, it's a law firm. They approached the CEO and they said they were not happy with their uh, fee. So the CEO advised that, okay, what we need to do, we can give you uh, about at least 10% increase, but if it's more than that, we'll have to go back to the procurement committee. But we then, then he received an email from the board chairman saying he accepts the proposal of the company secretariat in good faith, which was proposing 400% increase. Over and above that, there were conflicting emails that went to the PIC complaining about the executive colluding with auditors and a number of accusations were made against uh, the executive management because we were resisting what the board was proposing. And of course, Matapelo, I mean, you weren't alone in exposing all of this. Even the former CEO was on your side. On paper, this should have been a slam dunk. Exactly. Like the whole management team. That's why I said to you, Bongani, we know where the company came from. We know the losses. that We had to go to PIC to beg them to assist the company to pay for salaries. So we did not want to go back there. So what do you and think that went, is why. What do you huh? think went okay, wrong sorry? once once you exposed all of this, once you raised your concerns with the parent company that had deployed these board members, what do you think went wrong? Uh, because you are now saying that whilst your life is now in ruins, the people you exposed continue to live large. You know, Bongan, if I, I I don't know what 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 happened, uh, what went wrong, especially at the PIC side, because when when we wrote the letter, we were I think all of us were confident that the PIC, because they know where daybreak has been, we were so confident that they will be on our side, they will assist. To date, we've been requesting meetings with the PIC, and they haven't responded to us. They've met with the lawyers, which was late last year, but that was it. Since January 2021, we've been, we, we've been uh, requesting meetings with the CEO, CEO's office, and we never got any response. In the meantime, of course, uh, the story has developed. You've been to the CCMA, you won there. Uh, now the matter, of course, is uh, before the Labour Court. And what you told the Sunday Times was essentially that uh, the strategy the company has taken is to litigate and litigate and litigate. They've got the deep pockets, you don't. Yes. You know, all, uh, in all, with six uh, executives that has been displaced by all this, they have about 45 cases, 45 against all of us. And because the company was being run by this law firm, they are making money out of this process while we have to dig into our pockets. Matapela, I've spoken to whistleblowers before. I mean, what does this cost you and your family? You know, Bongani, it's... I think I'm I think I'm in a state of depression or I don't know I'm you know you feel like you're living outside your body. It has caused me so much anger. I think I there were I'll say three stages. At the beginning I was a very angry person. Yeah. And I was a determined person to say I'm going to fight these people. Yeah. Now I'm on my knees. I'm I'm defeated because I'm not receiving any any help. I've, you know, we've we've made uh, noise as much as we can, but I'm still in this position. Nothing has changed. You spoke about having been able to always look after yourself and your family, and are now relying on handouts. 
yes you know you 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 depending on friends to think about you you know your family members to i mean it's it's, it's too much it's uh, i was a very independent uh person i took care of myself and my family easily now i have to rely on friends and family to you know think about me you are even scared of because everybody is having it hard yeah the president is having it hard so yeah the president yesterday referred to the sunday times story yesterday afternoon when he was at an anc meeting uh, do you think that because now your story is out there um uh, it'll make a difference because as you say this is not new information it's not a new story this you know i'm hopeful bongani i i have to live in hope otherwise why am I living? The, pre- the president mentioning this gave me a bit of hope that something uh, will be done. I hope something will be done because the story has been in the papers <clears throat> for for months, for, for, for a couple of months now. And there is no assistance at all. Nobody's saying anything. The PIC will put out a statement to say, this is a matter between the uh, the company and uh, the the investee and its uh, and its board. It's not our matter. You told the Sunday Times you would do it again, and then you phoned them and said, "Actually, no, maybe you wouldn't." Yeah, because I thought, you know, when when I was asked by the Sunday Times, you you think of your your character as a person. Am I a person to keep quiet when I see something wrong? And immediately I was like, I'm not that person. I will speak out. But when you sit, and it is especially the interview happened month and where you're getting calls, you know, you have to pay bills, you have to do this and that. And I'm like, what did I put my kids through? That's when I called and said, um, you know what? I've thought about this and I don't think I can do this any if 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 i encounter any corruption i don't think i will i will say anything because the consequences are hush we don't walk the walk we don't walk the talk as a society do we we promise all sorts of things to people who come forward with information and yet when they do this is how we treat them. Matapa Lomore, we will keep an eye on your story and developments. We'll keep on asking the questions um, of all the role players and to try and make sure that something is done. We appreciate uh, your courage and coming on to the show and talking to us this morning. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.